boys and girls, I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. And today, or at this time today, I've been doing these all day long. It's getting late. I'm in the dark now. I got my, all the lights out. We're going to be doing the Pacific Division predictions and going through the rosters and seeing why I predicted them to be where they are in the standings. Uh, I also did team predictions for betting that you might want to check out on some of my videos because I'm a professional handicapper. If you go to uh, bpalpicks.com, I'll put the link in the bio. Three years running total green, making huge and now I've started my own website and stuff like that. And you can be part of it. It will be fun for you to frolic. <laughs> all right. This is all part of the Steel Flyers All Sports Network and the Perlo Wisdom Show. I've been really, really solid at these so far. Last year I did really well. I had a few that were kind of awry. So we'll see how we do this year. The Pacific Division itself is a tough one. It is really tough. I, I think it might be the toughest of the bunch, to tell you the honest truth. Going through it, I kept on going, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but. But I finally got through it. I got them all set up now. So we're going to take a look at that. And you're going to comment in the comment section because you have subscribed to my channel. And you do that sort of thing. And you're going to tell me what you think the Pacific Division is going to look like. And then we're going to banter back and forth and have Good times, my friend. This is all part of the Steel Flyers All Sports Network. There's going to be swag there. And it's, oh, no, I don't have it. I don't even have the shirt on. <laughs> this is Marvin the Martian. I was going to, it's going to say the Pearl of Wisdom show. It's black. It's really cool. It looks just like this, actually. That, that. Wait, that? How do you do that? That. Looks like that. Pearl of Wisdom show. There will be frolic. So, for everybody who subscribes to my channel, if you subscribe to my channel and comment in my comment section and say, I'd like a shirt, I may give you one with some money off or something like that. Five bucks off. Do that. All right. Let's look at who is going to be last. I'm going to start from last, and we're going to go to first, and we're going to do it now. There we go. That was odd. San Jose Sharks. I think everybody has the San Jose Sharks last in the Pacific. This is one of the easiest ones, really, of the bunch. Uh, just watched them play two games against the Preds. The second, that oh, on the, uh, what did they call that? The something out of town, out of global series or whatever. That's what it was, the global series. Uh, in Czech Republic, first game they got slaughtered. Second game they looked pretty good. I was actually surprised Nashville looked more tired than they did. Um, they had better energy, but on paper, this team should not even be getting close to the playoffs this year. Everybody had everybody really, as far as I'm concerned, got better in the Pacific, except for San Jose. Team of Meyer Hurdle. And now this is supposed to be Barabanov. He's injured right now. That would look a lot better than Cunnan. Cunnan's not a top-line player. He's simply not. The problem is, nor is just about everybody. you got Logan Couture, uh, who, you know, he's a good center now. He's starting to get older. He's starting to fade. Um, they got Lawrence from Carolina. He shouldn't be anywhere in, near your top six. Uh, Kevin LeBanc, eh. you know, Oscar Lindblom, they're giving him a shot. The last two games I saw, he got pushed around way too easy. Um, his skating isn't what he used to be after the cancer and stuff like that. Kudos to him to keep flying after having cancer and all that. But he's not looking great, really. Um, Nick Benino, good solid dude. Probably get some good value out of him at the deadline but and then Matt Nieto Nico Sturm I really like but this lineup like there's no second line really hardly there's barely a first line the third line is 
you know, Benino and a couple of guys that really shouldn't be playing in the third line. That's the thing about Oscar Lindblom. If he's not playing in your top six, you probably shouldn't be playing. So forward group is weak, very, very weak. But the good news is they kind of need to suck this year, really. They, they have a chance to get, uh, you know, win the lotto and hopefully get a stud in Bedard or Michka or Fantilli or somebody like that to get in this roster to bring excitement. Uh, bring some excitement to this roster and youth and a look towards the future, no doubt about it. On defense, Mario Ferrero, Eric Carlson. I mean, Eric Carlson isn't what he used to be, but he'd be a lot better on a roster that has some offensive players. He's an offensive guy. He's never been great defensively, but he his offense more than makes up for that. However, if when every time if you're passing the puck to Stephen Lawrence, it's not going to look good on the score sheet, I'm afraid. So, and Mario Ferraro, I mean, brave guy, brave kid, no doubt about that. I mean, but top pairing defenseman, no, not a chance. Edward Vlasic. It's just kind of putting in his time there. Matthew Benny was a nice pickup. Uh, Jacob Magna and Radim Simic are meh. Meh. He's even got meh in his name, Magna. Meh. No. Uh, he's barely played in the NHL his whole career. Good for him. He's getting a chance. Big boy. Can't skate very well. Radim Simic, small guy. Brave, but not very good in any way. So, <laughs> I don't know what more to say. Barabanov comes back, maybe. Uh, but in goaltending, Kakinen in the second game was the reason why they lost, pretty much. He, you know, there was a goal there that he should have got. Didn't look solid. Uh, James Reimer was the reason why it was close in the first game. But he's not a number one goaltender anymore. Neither one of these guys are. So, you don't have a number one goaltender. You don't really have anybody that, like Matthew Benning I like, but he's not a top four defenseman. Neither is Vlasic anymore. You don't have a top four defenseman in the lineup. And you have two guys in Megna and Simic that wouldn't make most lineups. And not a number one goaltender. Possibly Nudavara. You know, Nudavara has been struggled to, if he does come back, he struggled to make the Philadelphia Flyers, for the love of God. Right? Um... And Nikolai Knizov, he's good. I like him. And when he comes back, they'll be better. But they don't really want to be better now. And they're not, I hope for their sake, honestly, that they're really, really bad. I hope the fan base kind of still shows up. But I think that's where you're heading here. Getting Quinn as a coach, I think long term is good. Hold on to him. He's he, and, and that also tells me that they're really looking to rebuild. Trading Burns tells me that as well, and everybody else for that matter. Look for more of that down the road. They've got guys here that will actually, you know, bring back a couple draft picks. I don't know what they're going to do with Timo Meyer. I suppose if you already sign Hurdle, I guess you sign Meyer and you build around them. Hope that they're still relevant by the time you're good again. But last place for San Jose for sure. Next, the Anaheim Ducks. And I was not going to put them this low, but the Gibbs, John Gibson injury sounds bad. Whiplash, concussion type stuff. Um, made a comment where he's, he said that he's keeping food down now after the next day. That's a bad concussion, man, that he got in preseason. And you got to be careful with those. He'll probably be out a while. And this team can't live without him. I'm sorry. I, I just I was going to put them as a possible almost even playoff team. Let's go down the rest of the roster. Adam Henrique, I like him. I, I, I think he's – Adam Henrique is a good player. Uh, just above average player. I, I don't know why he doesn't get, an, get more credit than he, than he does. He can do a lot of things. Apparently, he's amazing in the room and for morale for people and stuff like that. I don't know if he's a top-line left winger, but 
Trevor Zegras and Frank Vetrano with Enrique. That's an interesting line. Frank Vetrano is a shoot first guy. The guy shoots from everywhere. And Trevor Zegras is Trevor Zegras. How good is he going to be his next year after last, uh, coming out to a 61 point year? Probably at least the same, maybe more. And I like him a lot. Mason McTavish has looked fantastic when he was in the lineup. And um, he's going to get a good shot now. Question mark. I, I'm, I'm not really sure I know myself how good he's going to be. I love the what he looks like, but you're talking about a 19-year-old for a full 82-game season. That's not easy. Ask Lafreniere and Kako and guys like that. Very talented kids, but this is the NHL now, but... Troy Terry had a fantastic year last year. I, I think they got to play him with Zegers. I don't know if I like this idea of playing Vetrano up there instead of Troy Terry. I mean, I think this is a kind of a way to crush a guy's confidence after having one really big year. But I'm not the coach. You know, um... Oh, why do I always forget his name? That ticks me off. Okay, I'm going to stop here for a second. I'm going to... Dallas Eakins. Why do I always forget that? Anyways, Dallas Eakins, you know, he's a pretty darn good coach. So he's got his reason. And he, he definitely put him in a position to succeed to get those 37 goals. So we'll see what happens. But Maxim Comtois, Lundqvist, and Jacob Silverberg. Not bad third line. I love Lundstrom. Did I say Lundquist? Lundstrom. Isaac Lundstrom. I love, love, love this guy. Pretty sure he'll take Ryan Strom's spot in the near future, to tell you the honest truth. I love him that much. Ryan Strom can play wing. You got a lot of mix and match here. I don't mind this top nine. Don't mind at all. Um, they're giving Pavel Regenda a chance here, apparently. Uh, picked up Brett Leeson off of waivers looking for some size down there maybe he'll he'll be able to pull out a spot and uh you know overall that lineup could do some damage i thought they would be able to but again without gibson i'm afraid i have to go against that thought uh fowler klingberg uh these klingberg i think was a pickup to it's like if they do really well and they do happen to be in a playoff spot. This is a team that's in a market that isn't exactly um, a playoff market. Or playoff market isn't a hockey it's a traditional hockey market. So if they're in the in even close to the playoffs, in order to capitalize financially, I think they have no choice but to keep John Klingberg. Maybe think of an extension. There's a lot of things they can do. More than likely, though, I think John Klingberg is going to move on at the deadline. They're going to get a nice package for him for the nice $7 million contract they gave him. Um, however, that being said, beautiful, nice line with him and Fowler. Uh, Fowler is better defensively than he gets credit for. John Klingberg isn't great defensively, but you got a high-powered offensive line there with Klingberg and Fowler. Kulikov and Drysdale, I love this. I love the pickup of Kulikov, actually. One of the most underrated defensive players in the league. Borderline elite, actually. And uh, they found they have some analytics people that saw this, I would imagine. And personally, you can just see with the eye test as well. So to play him with Jamie Drysdale, who they I know they really want him to round out his whole game, have a full game. He's great offensively, but he needs a lot of work defensively. He's only 20 years old, man. Not very common, 20-year-olds with his kind of offense are solid defensively when they come into the NHL. It's just not something that has been pressing for them to develop. So I think he's a wonderful pickup for, for Drysdale. And with Boilu and Shattenkirk, not much there. So your bottom, your 5-6 your is meh at best. So this lineup with Gibson would have a chance. This lineup without Gibson doesn't have a chance. I put him seventh. Uh, you got back when back and Einan possibly comes back, although he's injured all the time. Who knows how long he'll be there for. Uh, John Moore is just, I don't even know why he gets signed. He's injured before he even gets on the ice. 
you pretty much have to wrap him up with bubble wrap everywhere he goes because he will stub his toe or something. Something's going to happen, and he will be out. So I'm putting them in seventh. I could go down into their replacement players, but it doesn't really matter. I, I just It's unfortunate that Gibson had to be out like this. Next, Seattle. I put Seattle ahead of Anaheim and ahead of San Jose. I know a lot of people have Seattle as a possible playoff team this year. And I get why people think that way. Honestly, I, I can see why people think that way because – Getting all of Oliver Bjorkstrand and Andre Burakovsky were very solid pickups at five and a half million for the next couple of years. Solid pickups. Um, their overall depth will be better, no doubt about that. Love Matthew Beneers, but Matthew Beneers is still only 19 years old. He's a big 19 years old, but he's 19 years old. Unbelievable if he can keep up. Anywhere near a point of game pace over an 82 game schedule in the NHL as a 19 year old. Wonderful. Amazing. Do I think he can? He's got the talent. It's just so rare. It's so rare for a, a player to be able to do that. I think Veneers is the type of player that might be able to, though. But. You put him on there. I like the fact that they put Andre Burakovsky with him because Burakovsky is a one-shot shooter. Veneers doesn't have to think much. You get it to Burakovsky, he's going to shoot, you go to the net. You got Jared McCann there that's got some pretty nice mitts as well. I like that line. Is it a true number one, though, in the NHL when you compare it to number one lines in the NHL? Say to, like, McKinnon, Rantanen, and Landeskog. Hmm? Not really, right? Exactly. Yanni Gord, trying him on the wing with Wenberg and Bjorkstrand. Wenberg and Bjorkstrand. B B Wenberg is probably the reason why Bjorkstrand came over from Columbus. He had an option. He could have chose. He probably told them where, what to, uh, where he would like to go, and they were kind to him. That's the reason why I think they got him for such a cheap price. They were just kind to him. Also, not too many people have cap space out there. So you got a good, a very good player. A guy that can score 30 goals. However, you also have Wenberg, who's not a second line, a classic second line center. He's just not. He's a below average second line center. Yanni Gord, everybody loves his energy. Everybody loves his attitude. All over the place. Solid, you know, small guy that doesn't back down from anybody. But honestly, he's not a second-line player. 49 points. Uh, 48 points, that's probably where he's at. You can use him on the second line. But if you want to be a playoff team with the rest of the lineup they have here, you need somebody better than Yanni Gord there. Um, as far offensively and stuff like that. So you go then go with Ryan Donato with Wright and Everly. Three offensive lines. There isn't a shutdown line here. And that's my other problem. They, this isn't a strong defensive team. Everlay is not bad, actually. But this isn't a super strong defensive team. It's okay. It's average. Which is better than some rosters, no doubt about that. I'd say this is about an average team. Pretty much. Or a little bit below average as we go through. Tanev, Geeky, and Kuhlman. Cool fourth line. I love Tanev. Who doesn't love Tanev? Everybody loves Tanev. Just that meat and potatoes type guy. Really good defensively. Actually would like to see him higher in the lineup. I would put him with Wright and Everly over Ryan Donato. Ryan Donato uh, is just an all-offense guy. He does some cool things every once in a while. Makes some moves. Likes to have the puck, but his overall game is lacking quite a bit. As far as defense... Uh, Vince Dunn, I think, will have a big year this year. I do. Um, Adam Larson, I still don't call him a top-pairing right defenseman, but he's good as far as right defenseman goes. Uh, you know, Alexiak is solid in most ways. Uh, Justin Schultz, not so much. Susie, I love it as a 5-6 is great. William Borgen, nah. It's, it's a pretty vanilla defense when you compare it to other defenses in the league and in the division, and in the conference. So, 
And then you have Philip Grubauer, who, thank God for Seattle fans, look good in preseason. I'm not a Grubauer guy. I said that when he was in Colorado. If you were watching my videos, I was not a big on Grubauer when they got him. So people are like, wow, he almost won a Vesna, but it was Colorado. Like Gorgiev might almost win a Vesna in Colorado. They have the best two way forwards from four, first line to fourth line in the league, maybe the best of all time. Amazing. I'll get into that some other time, though. Uh, Seattle doesn't have that. Grubauer is not as good as a Vesna. He's, he's an average at best. He can get hot sometimes, and that's the reason why I really don't. That's He's kind of the big reason why I have him lo lower here. And Martin Jones, I don't know what they're thinking. He's terrible. He has been terrible for a long time. And I don't think that's going to change. Now, when if Jaden Schwartz ever comes off injury, maybe maybe he comes back. That's going to look a lot better for this lineup. Um, Daniel Sprong is an extra. The other problem I have is their replacement players because they're so young of a team, they don't have all that much depth. Cole Lynn, Alex True, John Hayden, like there's not much here, especially on defense. Uh, if injuries happen. They're kind of left out in the lurch. Solid pickups. I like Burkowski and Bjorkstrand as possible trade, use, using them to trade to get picks if you want to. But I real, I'm not sure what Francis is doing here overall. We'll see. I hope that's what he's doing because this team needs depth. Depth, depth, depth. They need to get draft picks. They need to build up their farm system and they haven't really gone and do, done that. And it it's scaring me because it looks like Francis doesn't plan on doing that. All right. Tell me what you think, Seattle fans. Comment in the comment section. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. I like talking to you on Facebook, but my first priority is to talk to you on YouTube. So get on the YouTube channel there. Sub me up. It uh, helps out my algorithm. It allows me to bring this content to you more and more. The Vancouver Canucks, and I was so tempted to put them higher here. Very tempted. Very tempted. Because I really like their top 12. Their top four lines. Um, but the more I looked at it, the more I went, I don't know how this is going to work out. Okay. Yes, their second half was good last year. Bruce Boudreau is a fantastic coach, especially on a short-term change. He, he, he knows how to change the energy. He knows how to get the energy in the room to be optimum for success. And from this pick to maybe the third place team, I think could go anyway, to tell you the honest truth. I love Bruce, Bruce Boudreau. He's gotten teams into the playoffs that didn't deserve to be there before. And this is a team, I don't know if you can say they don't deserve to be there, except for in one area, which we'll get to. JT Miller had a killer year. He got the big contract. Um, the thing about JT Miller was it wasn't like it was his only killer year. He had some good years before that where he looked like he was moving upward in trajectory. The question, the thing was he had his best year at 29 years old. Is he going to be able to replicate that at 30? Possibly, but most often is the case when players have best years like this at that age, they never go back to it. They're somewhere in the 70 point mark. And if that's the case, it's going to be difficult for Vancouver. They need him to be the 100-point guy, I think, in this lineup. Um, Connor Garland, I love him. I love his bravery. I love all that kind of stuff like that. I love his two-way play. Tanner Pearson, meh. I, I, people just love him for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, he's always on the top line. I don't get it. Maybe somebody can tell me why. Pearson always ends up on the top line of every team he plays for. Next line. Pod Coles in Horvat, and it looks like Besser might be able to get himself back from his wrist injury. And that would be huge. 
looking for a bounce back year after he had some serious problems with losing his dad last year. Um, almost to the point where you're like, hmm, you know, I don't know. I don't know. There was something that just didn't, I don't know. But Bo Horvat, I thought he was good defensively. This is one team, this is one guy that I had to, um, in my eye test, I thought he was better than he was. Because I don't like sit and look at analytics constantly all the time. And I don't put analytics in my videos. I will talk about analytics. And if you want to know where I got it from, I'll show it to you. But analytically, he's not good defensively. And when I looked at it after I saw that, I saw, oh, yeah, right, he's not. It was a bias. I had a bias that he was just instantly good defensively. But when I really paid attention to it, it became obvious that that wasn't the case. So second line center, he's going to have to be signed. And I don't know if they're going to be able to do that. Because they gave JT Miller all the money, we'll see what happens. If he wants top six money, I think it could be a problem. And they'll silly punt calls him. I love this kid. Love, love, love his attitude. I like the way he hates on the ice. Hates. You need guys that hate the opposition on the ice. And this guy's got that. I thought Bo Horvat would be more like that. JT Miller is kind of like that too. Looking for a big year from Pod Colson, and I think he's just gonna he's gonna be better for sure offensively, and he's gonna solidify a roster spot. I'm almost positive of it. But up there in the top six, we'll see how he turns out. I don't know anything about this Kuzmenko guy except that he had a point a game in KHL. We've seen that a million times. Not a million. Sometimes it works out. Sometimes it doesn't. There's guys that don't spear out and off and. You know, a couple of guys that have come over and it, it didn't really work out for them when they came over to the NHL. So we'll see how it turns out. Uh, preseason doesn't tell me anything. I got to see him on the ice. Elias Peterson, 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 Peterson should be where Horvat is. And I think he will be. I think it's going to be Peterson, Pod, Pod Colson and Besser. And Horvat will be down here with Nils Hoglander, who, from what I understand, they weren't very happy with him in the preseason. Didn't, he kind of came in with an attitude that he already had a spot. And it looked like he wasn't even going to make the roster for a while. So I like him. I like what he can bring if he's got his full effort in there. And I like that top nine. Even if JT Miller isn't as good as he was last year. Dakota, Nils Alman, and Curtis Lazar. Dakota Joshua, Nils Oman, and Curtis Lazar. I like Lazar. I like Lazar a lot. Dakota, he's all right. I don't know anything about this Amon guy. So we'll see what that fourth line looks like. But the real problem is here. Quinn Hughes, he's got an illness, no big deal. They, is this the way it, what they're going to do? They're putting Luke Shen with him, man? I mean, this guy should be nowhere near a top pairing. Nowhere near it. He had his best year last year of his career, and it still wasn't very good. It was below average. Now, I know people love him because he's big and he hurts people every once in a while and all that kind of stuff like that. But his defensive play is not great, and he has no offense whatsoever. So I personally don't care if you hurt people if you can't play. That's the way I look at it. Uh, and he just can't. He's not a good player. Oliver Ekman Larson and Tucker Pullman. That is pathetic. Absolutely pathetic. Oliver Ekman Larson has slipped defensively ever since he was 28 years old. And his offense has too. He just he just keeps on slipping and slipping and slipping. Tucker Pullman, what the heck he was getting a $2.5 million contract from anybody for? I don't know. 750000 max. He's he's a seventh, eighth defenseman, and they're going to play him in their top four. They picked up Riley Stillman. They got Kyle Burrows, who, you know, had a decent year last year. Good to see a guy get some NHL money. But none of this is a defense that can make the playoffs. I just can't do it. I can't put him in there. As much as I like that top 12, this defense is blah. 
And that's with what I think they have the third best goaltender in the league in Thatcher Demko. But he can't stop everything, man. We saw that with Edmonton two years ago, three years ago. If you, their defense was diabolically bad and still isn't great, but it's better. And their goaltending wasn't as good as this, but you can't stop everything. Maybe Demko can, is so good he gets in. Let me put it this way. If Vancouver does make the playoffs, Demko wins the Vesna this year. No doubt about it. That's the reason why I hummed and hawed about where to put Vancouver here because Demko is so good. I could actually see him us going, making this, saving this defense so much that it actually they get enough offense that they make it. I could see it, but I can't put it there. Now, when Ilya Mikhaev comes back, that'll be a big boost. And that top 12 is even better than it was before. I love, love, love him. Also, Tyler Myers is hurt. Travis Dermott's bad. Tyler Myers isn't that great either. When he comes back, he had a better year last year. He will make the defense better. He's certainly a hell of a lot better than Tucker Pullman. And Luke Shen, for that matter. But he's not great. And the, old, the overall offense, the overall defense is just diabolically bad. And they don't have many, many. If they do have more injuries, you have nobody. Gwilym Breezebaugh, Christian Wallanen. Brady Keeper, none of these guys, none of them. Noah Jolson, Jolson has never been able to get his foot in the in the NHL hardly because of serious injuries that ruined his development. There's nothing here, man, nothing. So I got to put him, I put him where I put him. All right, next. And this is, again, this next one could flip too. You could flip it. But. I think Vegas either could. I had Vegas making the playoffs, but I thought they were going to get better goaltending. If they if they do find a way to get better goaltending, or if Logan Thompson turns out to be better than more when he's really good, if he can be that if if he can be that consistently, because there are games when he is, I think they make the playoffs. Really, when it comes down to it, it all comes down to Logan Thompson. And that's why I think they may not make it. Because if it all comes down to your goaltender and your goaltender is 25 years old, has never been a number one before, it could be difficult. I know full well Aiden Hill is not the answer. That's for sure. But look at their forward group. Okay, say right now, Jack Eichel will have a great year. Point a game year this year, maybe more. He's a stud. And I almost put them in a playoff spot because of it. It's really why. But you lose Pacioretty, you bring in Phil Kessel. I think Phil Kessel is going to get more points than people think. Playing with Jack, with Jack Eichel for sure. And he's going to help Jack Eichel a lot. Um, Riley Smith is a great two-way guy on that line. I don't mind that line at all. I love, 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 love Mark Stone. He's one of my favorite players in the league. They got him on the right side. Uh, oh, no, he is a right right winger. Could be the best two-way right winger in the game. The guy, I think he should get a Selkie before he retires. Okay. Yeah, I think he should get a Selkie before he retires. He is that good. What was it, two years ago in the first 30 games, he had one goal scored while he was on the ice? Now, I'm not a big plus-minus guy. But that's insane. And his defensive analytics are just stupid. Elite, elite. They're elite compared to the elite. That's how amazing that guy is. Chandler Stevenson is, you know, he finds a way to get offense. you got to love his story where he came from being a fourth liner in Washington, came here and, and did came to Vegas and turned himself into almost a point-of-game player. Big question mark with Brett Howden, but it's really encouraging to see him getting a second line spot here because you know what his main problem was? Conditioning. If Brett Howden put his mind to it and becomes a NHL level conditioned athlete, he's got all the tools. 
maybe we're going to see that right now. Maybe we're going to see that. If they do, if he does, this, this line is going to be absolutely awesome. He split up the Riley Smith line with Carlson and Marcia, so and put Michael Amadit, Amadio on there. A lot of speed. And a, and, and a lot of defensive capability there. Uh, I, it's kind of a shutdown line. It's going to be a line that's really hard to handle. You can put them up against the best line in the league. You can put them up. You, you, you can put them out there in offensive situations. You can put them out there in everywhere. Didn't even mention the fact that Cassidy is the coach now, and I love him. I don't know what, what happened with the, all the guys that he pissed off in Boston or whatever the case may be. I think that I don't know what happened. But I think he's going to be great for this roster. Uh, Paul Cotter, Nicholas Roy, and Keegan Colasar is a solid fourth line. Defensively, Martinez and Peter Peter Angelo is great. McNabb, Theodore is your best defenseman. I know people say Peter Angelo, but he's not. Theodore is the best defenseman. Best defensive, best offensive player out there. Peter Angelo is a presence out there. Peter Angelo is more of a vocal leader in the room and all that kind of stuff like that. But on the ice, Shea Theodore is the best defenseman that Vegas has. And uh, playing with Braden McNabb, who's sol pretty solid defensively. He's not, he's not bad. He's not as good as everybody makes him out to be. He has to block too many shots a lot of the time because he spends too much time in his own zone. But he's all right. And I love Ben Hutton and White Cloud on your 5'6". That's a solid 5'6". So... It all comes down to Thompson, man. Can that defense make it? I'm, I'm tempted to put. I'm tempted to put Vegas in the playoffs here. I really am. But let's look at Los Angeles. It's so either one. If Los Angeles or Vegas made the playoffs, I wouldn't be surprised. Let's put it that way. Um, the bad part is, and I'm gonna do. The Central Division next. They're in that division. Those teams have a lot of teams that they can beat up. So I would like to put five teams in the playoffs here, but I can't because there's probably going to be five in the Central. But if if Vegas can beat out Dallas, hmm. I'm really thinking about that. I I don't know. But anyways, let's look at the this division. Keep on going with this. As you can tell, I've been kind of going back and forth in this for a while now. LA. I picked LA to make the playoffs last year. Um and a lot of people thought it was crazy, but I think they have an amazing coach. He, we had him in Edmonton in Todd McClellan. And I was like devastated when they fired him. I think he's incredible. Uh, it's He has a very simple system. The only thing I don't like about him is that I wish he would let players be more creative. He's a just shoot from everywhere type coach. And uh, that would be the only setback. But his defensive game, his defensive systems and all of that Extremely high possession coach, great coach for that. And this is a team that is built on crazy depth. Getting Kevin Fiala, speedster to play with Kopitar and Kempe, who had a 35 goal, goal season last year, breakout year at 26 years old. Now they're going to have a, uh, and Fiala had his breakout year. Everybody's going to know about these guys this year. So it's going to be more difficult for them to be able to re accomplish what they did last year. But that's still a solid line. And Andre Kopitar is an incredible passer, incredible two-way player. He's going to help these guys in both of those areas, especially Kevin Fiala. I mean, it's a solid line. Trevor Moore, Dano, and Arvidsson, fantastic shut down line that can score. It's kind of what all the lines are. I follow Quinton Byfield. That is the big question mark. Is Quinton ready? At 20 years old, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Gabriel Velarde had a killer camp. And 
I loved him. I didn't know what was going on. I don't know why they were playing him center. I'm glad they got him on the wing. Playing with Ayafalo, who's fantastic defensively. This is the reason. You notice I'm saying this over and over again with every player on the roster almost. Fantastic, defense, good defensively to fantastic defensively. Guess who else is like that? The Colorado Avalanche. And the LA Kings are built with, on that. And it's the reason why I'm pushing them up here a spot over Vegas. I just think their overall team is so good both ways that they can shut down every line in the league, and they do do that. Carl Grundstrom, Lazat, and Arthur Kaliev. I don't know why they consistently... Actually, I do. Arthur Kaliev is on the fourth line because he is not very good defensively. And McClellan is just not going to let you play in the top six until you are. Simple as that. I hear LA Kings fans all the time ask, like, calling for his head because they're not giving this kid a chance. I don't know if you agree with it or not, but... McClellan isn't the only coach that does that. Bednar does it in Colorado as well. Uh, Trotz, you might have heard of him also. If you're not going to be good defensively, you're not going to play top six minutes. That's the way he plays. I think it's actually probably a pretty solid way to go. As long as it, if it shouldn't kill the kid's confidence. But the guy's got a massive shot. I don't know. I think he's going to move up that roster. I think he's going to move up that roster. Anyways, I love that top 12. And, def and defense, it's on the small side, but possession-wise, it's awesome. Drew Doughty, eh, Drew Doughty's a little overrated, actually. His offense is great, but defensively, he's overrated. But Michael Anderson's good. Sean Dursey getting better and better all the time. He's actually better defensively than Doughty now. Um, and I think he's going to have an impact offensive season this year. Got him playing on the left side as a righty. I don't know. I'd have to see how that works out. Matt Roy is good. Edler at 36 is still stellar defensively. Sean Walker isn't bad. It's, it's a meat and potatoes. Nothing flashy. Get it done. Defense that gets it done. And a system... A coach that has a system that makes all their defensemen look good and all their forwards look good as well. And then Jonathan Quick. If he holds up, they're fine. It's all about whether is he ever going to stop. Like He's not fantastic. I'm afraid he, if he doesn't hold up, though, Vegas takes him. Because I don't think Peterson, I don't think Peterson's the guy. He just hasn't shown it over and over and over again. I got to see it. And the way it looks so far, if Jonathan Quick falters, I don't think there's much of a bed to land on here. This is the reason why I almost took LA to miss the playoffs this year. But I'm taking their overall depth and defensive play from all their forwards over Vegas by, by a slight, slight mark. So, And their replacement players are better than Vegas's too. you got Kupari, Turcotte. Elias Anderson, he's not great, but he can play. You know, uh, Fajimo, tons of, uh, Mauvrier came up in on defense. Tobias Bjornfurt is not, has not made the lineup this year, and he's really good. Jordan Spence, like their depth is insane. So when injuries happen, this team doesn't have a dip, where Vegas, when injuries happen, it's going to be a little tougher to keep up on. So, all right, next. LA fans, tell me what you think about everything I said, about maybe something you want to tell me. Uh, subscribe to the channel. Comment in the comment section. I'll talk to you down there, and so will everybody else. All right. Calgary Flames. Um, got to put them in second, right? You got it. I am not as sold on their offense after losing Kachuk in the deal, losing Kachuk and Goudreau as a lot of people are. But I'm giving it all to Sutter here. Huberto was bad defensively in Florida, Just plain and simple. His offense more than made up for it, for sure. Don't get me wrong. And he built that offense by, you know, playing on a line with 
guys that were not really first line guys. Granted, give you that. His passing is fantastic. His two way play is not though. Goudreau's is better. Now, enter Sutter. You think Sutter's going to be able to help Huberto become a better two way player? I would say so. Yes. So, more than likely, because he does with everybody. Elias Lindholm, hate to tell you this, and people disagree with me, he's overrated defensively. He's overrated defensively. He got a Selkie Award, though, parallel. Well, the people that pick the Selkie, quite often, if you have a high, if you have a high uh, face-off rate, and you play on a line that is solid two-way, they attribute it to the center. Because they don't look at analytics at all. There's still a lot of old school guys making those decisions. So, Tyler Toffoli is not very good defensively. Again, you notice I'm saying this a lot here. Manjopan is fantastic. Kadri's average. Dylan Dubé's average. Coleman is great. Backlund's great. Lewis is, I don't even know why he's in the lineup. Um, and then when you get to Lucic, Rooney, and Richie, it's blah, whatever. Their bottom nine is not very good. Their top nine will score enough for sure to, pro to get them in the playoffs, no doubt about that. But what's getting them into second and into the playoffs and further into it, in my mind, is this defense. This defense is possibly the best in the league. Certainly top three. Hannafin Anderson. Hannafin is so underrated. Rasmus Anderson is fantastic. Had a bit of a down year last year for some reason. Mackenzie Weger is their best defenseman right now. Mackenzie Weger is their best defenseman. And I know people will say, well, I, you, Perlo, you said that Florida won the trade. I know, I did say that. And that's because Kachuk is a unicorn of a player. I, I still think that uh, Tree Living did well with his return in the situation he was in, no doubt about that. But Uyghur is their best defenseman. Uyghur and Tanev together are mwah, beautiful. What a pairing that is. Mackenzie Uyghur is going to probably get more points than he's ever had in his career this year, playing with Christopher Tanev, this elite defensive defenseman. Zadarov turned was a gr very good defensive defenseman. Now he's an elite defensive defenseman. With Sutter being there for him. Nicholas Malosh is whatever, but Sutter will probably turn him into a damn good one. Jacob Markstrom is an elite goaltender. If he gets overworked, though, he falls really fast. He'll start off strong. I think they got to play Vladar a lot more than they did. Um, I, I, they, what, he played 23 games? I think you want to keep Marstrom around 55, play Vladar more. Overall, this lineup on defense is fantastic, and it's going to be able to carry them, no doubt about it. Their replacement players are, well, that's the thing. Injuries happen in the offense, and it could be difficult. But I think the overall division is weak enough that it won't cause a problem. Finally, Calgary Flames fans, tell me what you think in the comment section. Love to talk to you. Uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel and all that. Edmonton Oilers, I have first. And it's I have them first because offense wins in the, in the regular season. Um, I'm banking that Jack Campbell will be good enough more consistent, not injured like Smith. You know, honestly, I think Smith at his best is could be better than Jack Campbell. But Jack Campbell has a capability of being in the net a lot more. And Stuart Skinner, he's going to get a shot this year. Played well last year when he played. But I like their defense better. I think Nurse had a better year last year, probably his best year defensively, and you're going to see that improve, I think. He's just 
He improves every year that way. Cody Cece, got to admit, surprised the hell out of me. Played well defensively last year. Brett Kulak, I love that pickup. Fantastic. I don't know what Barry's doing there. That's Evan Bouchard's spot. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Evan Bouchard plays with Kulak. Barry plays with Ryan Murray. As long as Ryan Murray doesn't get injured, that's not a bad defense for this offense, which is stupid. Yeah, McDavid is 26. He's just hitting his prime, man. Just hitting his prime. He could have a 140-point year this year, 50 goals, seriously. With a Vander Kane, Vander Kane's not very good defensively. Offensively, he's just a beast. You know, he's just a beast. His offense certainly more than makes up for it. Probably score 40 goals. Uh, I don't know what Kaylor Yamamoto is doing there. That should be Pooley Harvey's spot. They got him on the fourth line. I don't get it. But Kaylor Yamamoto is good enough. It's just that line, you put your best defense partners out there because that line isn't very good defensively. Uh, Dylan Holloway apparently had a great camp. Big kid. Huge. Have you seen that guy? The guy is built like a ship brick house already at 21 years old. And apparently can skate like the wind and all that kind of stuff like that. It's going to be exciting to watch him. Dry Seidel playing with Hyman. Hyman is the defensive consciousness on that line, depending on what Holloway is going to be like. I'm not sure. But he's, you know, an elite two way guy playing with Dry Seidel, who offensively is insane. Not very good defensively as well, but he could be. He should be. He should be a lot better than he is. I think that this overall, this team really could use a lot more forward defensive consciousness. Hopefully we'll see that more this year. Uh, Ryan McLeod with Nugent Hopkins and at least, that's got to be Puglia Harvey. Get that. What's Foley doing there? Are you kidding me? It's Puglia Harvey, Nugent Hopkins, and Ryan McLeod. Good shutdown line. Puglia Harvey is an, going to be an elite two-way forward. I don't know what his offense is going to be, but defensively he's already fantastic. Um, if people don't think so because he doesn't beat people up. He's not physical like you want, like people want to see. But positionally, he's absolutely fantastic. It's just the way he plays. There's a lot of great two-way players that play like him. He's one of them, and he's good. So, and all of these lines can score. All of these lines can skate. In the regular season, this type of lineup, like we saw with Florida last year, can just floor people. Just floor people. I think the Oilers could have the President's Cup this year. Once you get to the playoffs now, it could be a different story. As far as replacement players, uh, we need Tyler Benson back. I was surprised if Philip Proberg is really going to be a scratch. He's got to be sent down. Um, Marcus Nima Lyman and Kukuk. They can, they can fill in. They did it last year. They can do it again. Love to see Devin Shore in the minors. I don't know why that guy kept on consistently. He's just a hard worker, but he doesn't have all that much talent. But to bring him up and play, great, every once in a while. Clint Coaston was a nice pickup from St. Louis. He can play in the top four. Matthias Janmark, their forward depth all of a sudden is great. So if they get injuries, they're still going to be able to fly. Tell me what you think about everything I said there, Edmonton Oilers fans. That's my full 42 for you today. That's all I have to give. Now it's time to move on to the little nappy naps. I've been doing these all day today trying to catch up. Watch all my other ones. I did, uh, what did I, do? I did the East, the Metro, and the Atlantic. You're going to want to watch that. I will be doing the Central uh, in uh, tomorrow probably. But thanks for coming on and listening to this fine programming today. Sub yourself up. Have a great day, everybody. Goodbye.